Hello gardeners and we want to thank you for watching us on Mid-American Gardener. I'm Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department and I have three great garden specialists with me, garden experts, and together we're going to maybe answer some of your phone calls and also uh, some video mail too. So let's <laughs> find out who's here and I'm going to start first with Larry Shobe. Hi there Larry. Uh -huh. Hi Diane. I'm Larry Shobe and and I'm uh, the grounds gardener for Eastern Illinois University in Charleston. And I deal with a certain number of flowers, shrubs, and trees, plus some vines too. Oh well, yeah, he's a flower guy. So what's your email for us today? Okay, uh, Diane, we have someone who has uh, transplanted uh, a peach seedling that is about eight inches tall. And uh, they would like to know just when this peach tree will begin to bear fruit. Well, it just so happens I planted a peach seed one time, and I found that by the third season, it began to have some flower buds, and by the fourth year, some fruit. So it's possible, if you take good care of it, that it and, and water it when it's dry, and, and keep it growing, and get some height to it, that it can uh, begin to bear some fruit in that fourth season. That's really not that long to wait. No. From a peach pit, that's that's pretty good. And you remember. I did a cherry tree one time, and it uh, one of them flowered the second season, and I was shocked. Wow, so it is worth I, worth it. I think we call that kitchen gardening or something like <laughs> uh -huh. that. Very good. Thank you, Larry. And then in the middle is Kay Carnes. Hi, Kay. Hi, Diane. I'm Kay Carnes. I'm a Champaign County Master Gardener. And my areas of expertise <clears throat> are herbs, uh, vegetables, especially heirloom vegetables, and um, oh, a lot of perennials and mm -hmm. whatever I've got growing. So. <laughs> and I have an a email from a viewer who said, in an earlier program, she thought she heard a suggestion about using sunflowers as trellises for vines. And she, I would like to get uh, lemon cucumbers to grow up a giant sunflower. Is this practical or even possible? It sure is practical and pops, uh, possible. And um, I, I think lemon cucumbers are awesome cucumbers. So uh, just plant them around the base, one or two I would suggest, around the base of the sunflower. And you know, it might help them uh, when, get a start vining uh, when they, you know, they'll start sending out the vines and just kind of wrap them around. and. Before you know it, you'll have cucumbers hanging from your sunflowers. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. I do too. I've grown flowers on it and, and pole beans, mm -hmm. but lemon cucumbers, those well, are you so know, good. Native Americans used to grow them around corn plants. They called them the three sisters and it was squash and beans and we did um, that yeah. one year just because mm -hmm. we wanted to, you know, to see that. But lemon cucumbers, oh, yeah. and the thing about lemon cucumbers, they're just the right size oh, for one person for a meal. It's and they're so good. Just right. Well, very good. That was a good question, and thank you for the answer, too. <laughs> All right, and now next to me is Dr. Don White. What have you got for us today, Don? Well, I am Dr. Don White, and I'm an emeritus <laughs> professor of plant pathology, and I taught introductory plant pathology to a lot of very nice Aww. undergraduates. Aww. And I taught diseases <laughs> of field crops and diseases of ornamentals and turf grasses. And I've got some show and tell. And the first thing I have is leaf blotch on horse chestnut. And you can see the leaves, there's kind of dead out. It goes from the middle of the leaf and then it yeah. extends outward. And you don't see very much of this, you know why? because you don't see very many horse chestnut. <laughs> and then, I've got one you will see, just gotta look around a little bit. <laughs> this is anthracnose on sugar maple. And there's just lots and lots and lots of this kind of disease around this year. There are several different diseases uh, that attack maples, leaf diseases. And this one you can kind of tell because it grows, the fungus grows between the veins and it'll cause some defoliation which I still think is a blessing because you grow things under sugar maples. <laughs> <laughs> there was some disagreement on the yes. panel about wanting leaves to stay on their sugar maples versus fall off. So anyway, so lots of leaf spots. I'm glad year, you brought yes. those. That's good for people to know they're not alone. Well, I wanted to just do a quick little um, 
Oh, I guess a little uh, hint for people sending in plants that they want us to ID. Uh, this is a weed that Doris from Claytonville wants us to ID, and it just turned a little too dark for us. So uh, we would love to have her resend this weed. Uh, it was in plastic, and I think it just um, it just blackened a little too much for us. So if you can send it in paper, or even in the envelope or in the the, in the letter that you write about it. That'd be great. So thank you for sending it, Doris, and I'm sorry we can't, we can't figure out what it is <laughs> in its current state. All right, now let's go to the phone lines, and we're going to start first with line two, and it's about a cherry tree. Hi there. Hi. Uh, my question is, I've got an approximately four or five-year-old ornamental cherry uh, tree or bush, and it's gotten to the point, the limbs are falling over, uh, the trunk can't support the limbs, and I was wondering if I could trim that in this time of the year, or do I have to wait till fall? Okay, I'm staring at Larry. <laughs> <laughs> you can certainly prune it now, and you should. Uh, by taking a few inches off of it, don't cut it way back, but take a few inches off of it so it won't fall over. and. As it uh, rebuds and grows a little bit more, uh, if, if it begins to fall, just take a few inches off of it, and that will solve your problem. You might possibly have to stake it for a little bit if it's fallen too far and doesn't want to come back up. But uh, be very careful not to uh, tie your string or whatever you're tying it with too tight so that it uh, chokes off the sap coming up the stem. Okay. Well, that was a good question. And thank you, Larry, for that answer. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go on to line three, and this one is another, another tree question. It's about tulip trees. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. I have a 30-year-old a tulip tree. It's a gorgeous tree, but it's strange. It's dying from the top down. The bottom of it, or the middle part, is really pretty, but the top is, I'd almost swear maybe it's been hit by lightning. Is that possible? Well, it, I would think that if you got hit by lightning, you'd see more than just the top that would be dead. And if it was hit by lightning, <clears throat> you would have a lightning strike dead bark all yep. the way to mm -hmm. the ground. No, I don't. Okay, then it's not that. Uh, the tree might have busted with s uh, heavy snow in the winter or winds this spring and have cracks in it, and that might be causing it to die, too. The the crack in the branch might be too great hmm. and not enough uh, sap can get uh, clear up to the tree for so it to grow. So should she get that top part pruned out and see if the rest of it will It's very over? possible that it would and, and a new leader might come up if it's right in the top of the tree. Well, it's worth trying because if it's 30 years old, I'd, I'd say maybe get And an arborist, an arborist. can shape that tree for yes. her. Thank you very much. I certainly appreciate it. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks so much. All right, let's go on to line four, and it's about roses. Hi there, line four. I hear no rose question. Well, what I would like to do is go to our video <laughs> mail next, and it's about periwinkle. So let's do our video mail. Uh, hi, my name is Marv and I live in uh, Champaign and I have a question about my, uh, uh, my periwinkle ground cover uh, which is doing extremely well in several other parts of my yard but which has, which is dying back um, here um, in this, in this bed for some reason you can see some, some dying back here and here and I'm just wondering um, if it has anything to do with the proximity to the maple tree here or um, it started last year when it was hot and dry so I suspect that that might be the problem but uh, uh, certainly we haven't had that problem this spring and, and I'm seeing the same same uh, dieback so I'd be interested to know if uh, what might be causing it and uh, if there's anything I can do to prevent it. 
Okay, now we're all going to look at Dr. Don. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for this one. <laughs> that looks to me like it's a foma stem blight, and it's P-H-O-M-A, and it's a fungal disease. And normally it, it would be uh, favored by some area that's shaded so that you get uh, some high humidity and some moisture that remains on the stems because it's another one of these things that are favored by a little bit of moisture. There are some fungicides that will take care of it. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is. And he knew it right away, and we were so glad. <laughs> glad. Yeah, I was going, yay. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was happy to, to know it. And we were all thinking, oh, my, this is hard, and he knew it. Well, now let's try for that rose question again. Let's do the roses. Hello there. I really want the rose question. I guess not, huh? Okay, well, we're going to go to the um, raised bed garden question next, if we have that question. I would like to ask two questions. I want to ask about a rose and rhubarb. Roses and rhubarb, okay. Uh-huh. And what's your rose question? Uh, I've just planted one this year. And I can't see that it's doing anything. And I was wondering, how can you tell when it's dead? Okay, well, we're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> Does it have any leaves on it? No. Uh -huh, and when, when did you plant it? I planted it about the 1st of May. And oh did my. it have leaves for a while and then it drop? It never had anything. I ordered the plant. Okay. Okay. So it's it was, dead. <laughs> Now, Likely. Larry, what do you really mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, from it's May. dead. <laughs> no, from that's, May, it just about has to be. I like that you're very matter of fact, no beating around the bush. It's dead. That's right. You I think don't it think. Is dead. I don't yeah. think that it could possibly be alive no. planted no, that no. long ago. I just like okay. the way you did it. Thank so you. straightforward. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry about your rose, but now, what about the rhubarb? Well, I had two plants. And they just didn't do anything this year. Of course, they're only in partly sun. And I was wondering, when can I transplant that? All right, Kay, I'm looking at you on that one. I, are they healthy? Yes, they are. And how long have you had them in the ground? This is the third year. Third year. So I would really wait until next spring and dig them up when they're small, when they're first coming up. And okay. Move them then. And, and why did you want to move them? Well, it's uh, close to bushes, and okay. the bushes okay, so are getting too big. Yeah, I see. They're oh, not okay. getting enough sure. sun, so yeah. And okay. They're not getting too much sun, so mm -hmm. I thought I'd like to move them a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I would wait till spring and, and move them early spring. Whenever All right. they just start to come up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I enjoy your show. We appreciate it, and thanks for your questions. Bye. Well, now, let's uh, go to a, a little <coughs> did you know part of our show. That's a good tip for people going to farmers markets mm -hmm. and if you're getting vegetables from friends, so very nice. All right, now let's do another round of a, an email or show and tell. So Larry, okay. start with you. We have a viewer here who has a collapsing hillside along a creek and would like to know what best could be planted uh, to prevent that erosion. And it's going to depend uh, on where that creek is located in hillside. If it's in the back someplace, it's possible that you might want to use bamboo. Bamboo is wonderful, but it's not to be planted just everywhere because it can be a little bit ev invasive, and it also is quite tall unless you're using some very miniature types that spread, and, th and they can be found too. Uh, so, so that's a possibility, but they, they are very invasive for the most part unless you get some clumped forms of it. Uh, also, uh, there are some uh, perennials that you could use. Babtisha is uh, uh, a plant that is 
native to here, uh, and then you can find improved varieties of many different colors. And uh, those are deeply rooted, and they will help hold a bank. And daylilies are excellent for that, and you can spread them out and have so many different colors on a hillside. And plants like yarrows, mm -hmm. and there, there's any number of, of plants of that nature that remain clumped. But uh, Diane and I were talking about that earlier, and she mentioned the daylilies, and, and they're just excellent for that. And there's they're so tough. many beautiful colors mm -hmm. of them, too. And they can take the dry, yes. but yeah. then they can take the wet and hold in. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a yarrow daylily clump that's, the daylily is just a day from opening. It's going to be, I can't wait, it's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> it's a light pink and, and yellow yeah. with the yellow yarrow. So yeah. that's, we're all excited about our plants. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. And now Kay. Okay, I have um, <clears throat> an email from a viewer that says, my small vegetable garden area has been partially submerged most of the spring. I have decided to add soil to the garden in order to build it up approximately three inches above the surrounding lawn. I want to amend the soil with lawn clippings, shredded leaves, and compost throughout the summer. Should I plant a nitrogen-rich crop, such as rye on the spot, in order to discourage weed growth and to provide additional nutrients when the plant is plowed under in the fall? Um, I, you know, I wouldn't, with all that you're putting on, you really don't need additional nitrogen and nutrients. Um, grass clippings are wonderful mulch, and they're really high. They've got a lot of nitrogen in them. And of course, um, if you want, and compost as well. So I would just layer that stuff, and I don't think you'll have any. I use grass clippings as mulch in my vegetable garden, and they really, you know, a nice thick layer does a great job. So. Um, I wouldn't worry about putting the rye in. Just keep layering all that, you know, the layers that you're putting on and then dig them in really well in the fall. And you might even want to put some kind of little border, you know, so it's almost like a raised bed around the edge of it. You can use rocks or bricks or anything mm -hmm. um, just to keep that, you know, defined and, and the soil up there. And, and you could use many. plants like the clumped form of liriope or something mm -hmm. to add a little color to your border yeah, or something. Yeah, you could do that. But there's as many ways mm -hmm. to make a raised bed as there are gardens. Oh, you're right about that. <laughs> so don't be inhibited by uh -uh. that, just what yeah. you have. Yeah. Logs, um, it just anything. Right. And that's fun, too. Well, good. Thank you, Kay. Mm -hmm. And now, Don, what have you got for us? Well, I had to bring along a herbaceous plant to keep... What a some lovely one. <laughs> <laughs> well, one that I like. Okay. Well, <laughs> to keep dying. Just this a is an uh, orange coneflower. It's rude beckia. This one is definitely rude. If you take a look <laughs> at it, you'll notice all the leaves are black. There's big splotches on it. This is a fungal leaf blight. And this is a very common disease. And I've got some growing in shade that are just got to be completely black. If you have the chance to go to one of these demonstration gardens or a trial garden and look at these and see there are some that you'll find that don't have very much leaf blight. You may not get the flower color you want, but if you want to have plants that look healthy and aren't so unrude, then <laughs> uh, you may consider wow, those, those varieties in the future. It's the, they're just black. When they're like that, they're not going to bloom and look nice anyway. Well, yes, this yeah. one's going to make it. It's yeah, going to bloom, but it's... A little something it, on there. But you're staring at the black leaf. Yeah. yeah. The black and leaves the and the little yellow be flowers. Very showy, and the black though. center, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> we were trying to be optimistic there, but it wasn't working. Well, thank you, because that is a problem. And people... Oh, yeah, it's all over. It yeah. is all over, yeah. especially this year, but every year, it seems like. All right, well, we're gonna go to the phone lines and it looks like we have another cherry tree, cherry tree question. Hello there. Hello. What's your question? I've got a Bing cherry tree. Yes. And it, this is about its fourth or fifth year and it blossoms, but no cherries. Okay. Well, if it's well, a fruiting variety, maybe it needs another cherry yeah. tree to really mm -hmm. pollinate it. Well, I More have a likely. Rainier. Pardon? I have a Rainier cherry tree that's a year younger, and it has bared cherries this year. Does it bloom at the same, do they bloom at the same time? Yes. 
Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. It's a mystery That's to me. Strange. If you have one that pollinates it, did they? Uh, did you see them actually drop off? I mean, um, did no, they? No, because I work out of town. But yeah. I mean, it acted just like the other one. Only the other one had cherries, and this one does not. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if something caused it just to yeah, absize and drop. Or, or weather I, conditions at the that's time. That's what I was if wondering. If it was raining at the time and raining day and night for a, a while, maybe it wouldn't pollinate. Hmm. That's, I don't know, but... Um, but, but then the other, the other one, one did. did. But the yeah, other one did. So and the other one might be self-pollinating, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, do you, do you have to have the same kinds of cherry trees for pollination? Not usually, do you? Hmm. I don't think so. Just at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah. yeah. Flowering. Yeah. Well, I know when I had a Bing cherry tree, the neighbor had one, so they flowered exactly the same time, and we had some great years right up until the birds ate them. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah. I, you know. I've got a cure for that, so <laughs> that's another question. So, well, we're a little bit stumped about it. So I don't know if it was environmental this year. I'm not sure, but those They're are only about about 15 feet apart from each other. Yeah, see oh, that. Yeah, mine that's was close enough. was not that close from the neighbors, and it was it was fine. Well, we're going to just have to be stumped until one of our colleagues gives us <laughs> some more insight. Um, maybe right. we'll come up with an there answer. There is a reason. There is, but it may be environmental. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you very much for your question. And now we're going to go on to line four. Well, actually, a scotch pine question. Hello there. Yes. Uh, I have a scotch pine tree. It's probably 20 years old, about 20 feet tall. And about two thirds of it has turned brown. The other third looks good. Uh, if I cut everything off, the the dead stuff, will that come back? Or best <laughs> idea is to take the whole tree out. Oh, I kind of think that one belongs to me, maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyone who's laughing yes. gets to take yeah. that one. <laughs> There's a disease that's uh, really playing havoc with some of the pines. It's a uh, pine wilt, and what it is. It's a nematode that's spread by an insect. The nematode gets into the xylem vessels and basically cuts off circulation in the tree. The nematode in the tree usually will have along with it a fungus that causes a blue or blue-green stain. So when you cut into it, you'll see the blue stain in the wood tissue. And there's just nothing you really can do about it. It's it will likely die sooner or later. Okay, does this affect the white pines as well? No, in you know, white, white pine in the literature is listed as susceptible, but I have yet to see a white pine that actually has pine wilt. Okay. But I would say don't plant scotch pine, uh, red pine. Yep, or Austrians. And Austrian right. pines. They're okay. all susceptible to and that. And that blue. If I, if I dig that out, could I plant a white pine back into there? Yes, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, be a problem. Okay. I thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And that blue ring is so noticeable. That's really neat. Oh, is it? it? The blue stain fungus. Yeah. It's okay. not neat because your tree's dead, but it's really, if you're a plant pathologist, it's really <laughs> neat because you can, or a bug dude. <laughs> These are very large nematodes, <laughs> it, too. They're really. Oh, it's blue. It's really something. Well, let's go to a little quick quiz. Don't go away. Did you guess correctly? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Well, let's do a rose question. I wanted it earlier, so do we have a quick question about roses? Yes, I have a rose that grows about five foot tall every year and with lush with buds and leaves. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the other day that uh, it doesn't have as many buds on it and the leaves are getting brown spots on them. And I've checked the stems and under the leaves and everything and I don't see any scale or any bugs or anything. And I was wondering what I could do to save the bush. Okay. Who wants to dive in quickly on that one? Is it black spot? It could be. And it's been a very wet year. Yes, it could be black spot on rose, and there are 
dust and foliar sprays that you can get, fungicides that uh, might keep it from losing more leaves. And if it's small enough, you can pick those that are the worst off and destroy them, and that might help too. And just you know, keep it clean keep like that. Right. So what brand would you recommend or whatever? There's a number of them that are cleared. We don't do brands because then we'll have somebody call us and <laughs> ask okay, us, why well, didn't what, you what, recommend what? my brand? <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to a garden center, just ask for a black yeah. spot and they'll take care of you. Well, thank you. That was a quick question and it does go fast. We thank you so much for watching. Have a great week gardening. See you next time. Bye-bye.